welcome to the Property Elite podcast. I'll be your host, Jen Lehman, Chartered Surveyor and co-founder of Property Elite. Stay tuned each week for more on industry hot topics, market updates and new RICS guidance. In this week's podcast, I take a look at the Bishard Review into the purpose, governance and strategy of the RICS. It's essential listening for all APC and asset risk candidates, as well as qualified surveyors. The podcast will cover several competencies, although primarily it relates to ethics, rules of conduct and professionalism. If you want to read the full review, you can head to our website blog or the RICS website. So what is the Bishard Review? The Bishard Review is the independent review of the RICS's purpose, governance and strategy. It was commissioned by RICS Governing Council in December 2021 following the Levitt Review. And you can read about that in a previous blog on our website. The Levitt Review was another independent review, but into Treasury management issues at RICS during 2018 and 2019. The aim of the Bishard Review was to create a new sense of purpose and direction so that RICS can once more stand tall as an exemplar professional institution capable of tackling the challenges which will shape the way we all live in the years to come. The reporting process included a call for evidence leading to 551 submissions, 90 meetings and roundtable discussions with 372 participants. The final report was released by Lord Bishard in June 2022. So what recommendations were made? There are 36 recommendations made by the Bishard Review, and I'm now going to run through those with you as referenced directly in Appendix 2 of the review. So number one, RICS agrees and seeks to amend its Royal Charter to incorporate the following revised purpose. The institution exists for the benefit of society to deliver positive change in the built and natural environment in the United Kingdom and around the world. It does this by advancing and facilitating access to surveying knowledge, by maintaining and promoting the usefulness of the profession, and by leading, supporting and regulating a body of skilled professional surveyors and firms who demonstrate the highest ethical and technical standards. Number two. Governing Council will consider the global strategy and a delegation framework to give appropriate freedoms, resources and responsibilities to regional and area boards whilst maintaining globally consistent standards. Number three, commercial activity will be separated from other activities at RICS. This will be led by a suitably qualified executive with strong commercial experience and it should report into the commercial committee who will ensure these activities deliver value for members and value for money. Number four, Matrix will be reinvigorated to give younger members a stronger voice in the RICS, including allowing an appropriately selected representative from the community of younger members to sit on governing council and participation by younger members throughout the whole RICS governance structure. Number five, A diversity and inclusion panel should be established to provide advice to the RICS boards and standards and regulation board. Number six, RICS should significantly improve its technology by setting out an RICS technology strategy as part of the overall strategy approved by Governing Council, confirming the RICS technology plan as part of the annual business planning process, appointing a member of the board with technology experience, and establishing a technology panel chaired by the board's co-opted specialist, reporting to the board with responsibility for supporting the CIO and overseeing the delivery of the technology plan. Number seven, the RICS should reaffirm its commitment to work in the public interest and for public advantage. Number eight, the Governing Council should produce and consult on a framework document setting out the responsibilities and governance of the Standards and Regulation Board. This framework will align where possible with the Legal Services Board's internal governance rules and include a number of items included in number eight in Appendix two. Have a look for the full list. Number nine, to put public interest at the heart of its work, RICS should consider establishing a fund for public interest activity. This could include support for members to undertake pro bono work and scholarships for students from communities where surveying is not well represented. This could be funded through the sanctions imposed on members and firms from regulation. Number 10, a public interest panel should be established to advise governing council. Number 11, 
RICS should develop further its thought leadership role. Number 12, RICS should make it clearer how clients complain or seek redress for inadequate service. Number 13, the Standards and Regulation Board should consider the establishment of a consumer panel to report to the board on consumer issues and the extent to which regulation is effective in the public interest. Number 14, RICS should commission an independent review of its effectiveness and the degree to which its work is undertaken for the public advantage every five years. Number 15, RICS should build upon the foundation of the member engagement, experience and value program to ensure all members have access to a high quality offer, including content and events led by members in their geographic area supported by local staff. 16, RICS instigates a customer service improvement program spanning processes, systems and culture to improve the level of service received by members. 17. The relationship between members and staff should be redefined to make clear that staff advise and support members. 18. RICS should draw up and consult on a renewed staff and membership partnership statement, clarifying the expectations of both parties. Number 19. RICS should consult widely on a proposed set of values that will be applicable to all staff and shared across the whole surveying family. This should reference quality of service, respect and public advantage. Number 20, the Nominations and Remuneration Committee should oversee the Senior Vice President Selection Process and the Presidential Nominations Committee should be dissolved. Number 21, a Senior Independent Governor should be appointed to act as an intermediary between Governing Council, the Board and the Executive. 22, Governing Council should remain the body ultimately accountable for directing and overseeing our ICS strategy but should be reformed so its membership of 28 better reflects the geographical distribution of members and the importance of professional specialisms. 23. Governing Council should be chaired by the President, who will be the highest elected office holder and represent the pinnacle of the profession. 24. Governing Council should meet formally four times each year with additional meetings as required. 25. An RICS board should be formed to oversee day-to-day operations and delivery of the business plan agreed by Governing Council. This will have an appointed chair who will be an RICS member, and there will always be a majority of RICS members on the board. 26. An Audit, Risk, Assurance and Finance Committee should be formed from the existing Audit Committee to replace the existing Audit and Finance Committees with enhanced risk management responsibilities. The current Finance Committee should be dissolved. 27. A membership services committee should be formed to advise on the operationalization of our ICS strategy in the world regions and ensure a consistent and improved level of quality of member services globally. 28. A knowledge and practice committee should be formed to oversee the professional group panels, lead on the advancement of knowledge and professional development, and take responsibility for policy affairs and thought leadership ensuring a consistent level of representation across RICS disciplines. 29. RICS should consult on the structure of its professional disciplines to inform the development of a number of professional group panels, leading the advancement of knowledge and professional development within their respective sectors. Number 30. The Nominations Committee and Remuneration Committee should merge to form a new entity with responsibility for both areas. 31. A separate commercial arm should be established with responsibility for delivering RICS's commercial activities. 32. A commercial committee should be established to have oversight of RICS commercial activities. 33. All committee chairs should undertake an annual evaluation to monitor the performance of their committee. 34. All committee chairs should introduce an appraisal process to develop and evaluate the performance of the members of their committee. 35. The Boards and Standards and Regulation Boards should commission an external evaluation of performance three yearly. And 36. And finally, Governing Council should simplify the election process for governance bodies and set this out in a straightforward and transparent manner. So, what else do you need to know from the Bishard Review? We recommend that all candidates read the review first of all particularly understanding a number of the principles and key recommendations. In summary though, chapter one gives you some context on the history and purpose of RICS. 
Note chapter two moves on to the current and proposed future strategy of RICS, including membership engagement, sustainability, diversity and inclusion in technology. Chapter three relates to RICS regulation and the public interest mandate. Chapter four moves on to membership engagement issues, whilst chapter five will help you to strengthen your understanding of the culture and values of RICS. In particular, how do you feel that these align to your own values? Chapter six gives you more information about the governance structure of our ICS and how it can be improved in the future. And if you have a look at our website blog, there's a great graphic of how this might look in practice. So what will happen next? Within all the chapters I just mentioned, you'll find the recommendations of the Bishard Review intertwined and explained in further detail. Our ICS Governing Council are working to now implement all of the recommendations at pace. This will be through five new working groups and three phases discussed in Chapter 7. Phase 1 is transitioning the responsibilities of the Chair of Governing Council to the President, recruiting a new Chair of the Board, Leader of the Executive and Chair of the Combined Nominations and Recruitment Committee and undertaking various consultations. Phase two is transitioning the responsibilities of the management board to a new management board, recruiting or appointing a senior independent governor and other members and conducting elections for geographic governing council seats in early 2023. And finally, establishing new key committees in phase three, professional group panels and world regional boards and electing new disciplinary governing council seats. Thanks for listening to the Property Elite podcast this week. Head to our website to check out our full blog, free and paid support resources and services, free consultation for every single RICS APC and ASOC RICS candidate, and also ask us any questions you have via the website chat blog. See you next week.